you're not in this to be deferential. You're not in this to like wait for other people to kindly give you some room. Think of it this way. You're in some dance class. I know I've spoken about this before. I happen to have been a professional performer, and that includes being a professionally trained dancer for a long time. So there you are, doing your dance thing. There you are, studying your lessons, looking in the mirror. You think anybody else is waiting for you? They're all trying to do their stuff, and they're trying to learn all of their things better. You need to do the same thing with all of your business stuff. You don't want to wait for anybody. They are not your daddy. They are not your mommy. Neither are they mind readers. You don't need to be pushy. You don't need to, you know, make yourself into an annoying fruit fly that's you know <laughs> you don't need to do that but you do need to step up and claim what's rightfully yours which is your ownership of your badass product and your badass attempt at helping people it's not about you and only you it's not about your own fun and profit it's about something more far more profound you have something you can help people with. I can help you fix that. I can help you refine that. I can help you understand what it is, in fact, you really want to do instead of that scripted bullshit that lets you define your avatar, define your niche, define your funnel, and then go with some scripted boilerplate crap. No. I can help you locate something deep inside you that you love to offer that you can tie to some way of actually helping people fundamentally different from everybody else. You're not in this to like say, okay, I'm now going to be a shoe salesman. You want to be a shoe salesman? Go join some shoe store. You can sell their shoes. You want to sell waterbeds? Go ahead. But if you want to actually recontextualize and reinvent what it means to be that shoe salesman, you cannot just do it like everybody else, ringing doorbells saying, hi, you need shoes? No, you have to actually pony up with something that is uniquely you, that makes it not only interesting for them to talk to you, but fun for you to wake up every day, for you to do all your cool shit. This is about your life. This is not to be trifled with. This is not to be trivialized. This is not to be a mere distraction. If you're trying to do this to try it on for size, go somewhere else because this is not for just trying on. If you're going to choose to do something valuable with your life, hey, Gordon Paul, lovely to see you here. I am on StreamYard, which means that if you're <laughs> not letting me know what Facebook user you are, although I want to, I don't know who it is. However, hey, Gordon Paul, lovely to see you here, and it's lovely to see you, whoever the fuck you are. <laughs> type in and tell me. <laughs> and what I was saying is that with your life and with your life's purpose and with something more profound, you can actually step in and join the pantheon of people who are doing what they need to do because they know not only they deserve to, but everybody else who deserves their 
sensibilities, philosophy, theories, understandings, research, investigations, thoughts, principles, methods, delivery, content, service, and brilliant honesty. Those are the people you get to join when you step up and claim your space. Because no one's going to do that for you. They're all busy out there living their lives. And you, yes, you, need to not wait. You need to not imagine that, number one, there will always be a time. There won't always be a time. It's like that great character, uh, the visionary guru, Don Juan who, and this is not the Don Juan, the Casanova. This is uh, Don Juan, the teachings of Shishitlakuka. Uh, I can't remember. Um, uh, the, the prophet in the desert from the books by Carlos Castaneda, who tells one of his pupils, who is the imaginary pupil who writes this stuff down, the teachings of Don Juan, where Don Juan says, the problem with you humans is that you think you have time. Has this past year and a half, two years, whatever it is, this past weekend's giant storm in the northeast of the United States and other parts, we here in Denmark had hurricane gust warnings and I had to we storm weatherproof my entire property at our summer house up by the beach. Has this past period of time taught us nothing other than the time is now? So, this is not about waiting. It's not about waiting. I don't know how old you are. If you're my age, you shouldn't wait. If you're younger than me, you shouldn't wait. And if you're older than me, you definitely shouldn't wait. Why? Wait. Who are you waiting for? You don't have to start giantly huge, all fully prepared. You can actually be planning while you're doing. I have a client who has been through the ringer lately. She had to curtail our one on one sessions because she was taking care of an ailing family member who ultimately died. A month and a half ago, where our last one-on-one -on -one call was still trying to figure out how she could deliver what she needed to do with passion, she hopped on this past few days, you know, like five days ago. She had been marinating various ideas for a long time, and she brought it like gangbusters. She had not set it aside while she was too busy with the grief, the strife, the difficulty, the trauma, the bittersweet departure. No, she was actually thinking about it that whole time. And when she had the time for action, she was able to take and harness everything that she had been doing and bring it big. And wow, did she. She surprised herself. She only needed a few little corrections from me. They were minor corrections and she could understand them completely. The guts of what she's doing stepped up one major full plateau by her having the badass method in the back of her mind that she was actually doing while she was having to channel and sort of pay attention to other directedness that was highly valuable, very important, essential stuff. And she wasn't forgetting her work with me on her strategy. She stepped it up. So this is someone with more strife than you, probably, using in the background all of the work that is the finely tuned work while moving everything forward. 
In other words, going back to the concept of you don't have to wait for anything, don't wait. Now, here's the other thing. You're going to start because you're going to take a look at this and say, hey, Paul, this sounds fantastic. Yes, 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 do it now. Well, here's the next good news. Just because you suck at it right now and you don't have the moxie and powerful energy that I am using now that I can deliver, that I teach my clients to deliver, doesn't mean that you can't actually start getting the hang of severe, supreme, authentic video badassery now. Method allows you to ingest and marinate the concepts of doing it properly so that when you're ready, it actually shows up the way you want it to. In other words, while you're busy not waiting, you ought to be arming yourself with the best possible understanding of how to do this because those are the concepts that you can actually practice in the shower, in your car, during traffic, wherever you need to be while you are not actually just right here focused on pressing the play button and going. Who's this? Hi, Paul. How are you putting out so much content? Sorry, I'm just logging on now. I'm working on my story right now. Who is this fine Facebook user? Hi, Paul. Tell me who you are. I'll answer you. How are you putting out so much content? This is wonderfully easy for me. The way I put out so much content, and I don't even have to think about it. I have a phone. I have a phone with notes, notes on there. There are my notes. A lot of these notes are ideas for content. Content is everywhere. But I'll say this. It's Nikki. Hey, Nikki. <laughs> content is available everywhere. You... Once you understand, and Nikki, you're in my program, so you can go into various components of my program. And we and mention this tomorrow, and in our group coaching, I will answer that. But right here and now, I want to let you know, because you ask, you ask a good question that's valuable for many people. How do I make so much great content? You need to have something you're pushing against. When you know who you truly are, what you want to say, and why you want to say it, no one can stop you. I know I've said that before. Here's the next step here. When you know who you are, what you want to say, and why you want to say it, you develop your core understanding. And when you develop your core understanding, you have perspectives on all sorts of things all day long coming from every, direct, every angle. And when you do that, or when you see that, you have opinions about what's out there. And then... You can go into a method that allows you to understand, and you, Nikki, know this because it's in the content generation section of my online program. You can go in there and use the tools to methodically sculpt what you want to say. And because of that, because of that, you can go into a method that examines your opinions 
and uses that examination to fashion things that you want to talk about for all the right reasons, things that you need to say. This is the same thing that a comedian, stand-up comedians, playwrights, artists, painters, sculptors, poets, novelists, screenwriters, scriptwriters, improvisationalists, and the finest motivational speakers. Notice I say the finest, because motivational speakers I place is at a lower level than artistry. <laughs> yes, I'm biased. There, I buried my lead. Yes, I'm biased. There isn't a motivational speaker on the world that has the balls, the guts, the power of the biggest artists. There are occasional motivational speakers that are artists in their own right. But motivational speaking appeals to people on a more base level than art. It's a more primal level in some ways. Actually, no, it's not a more primal way. It's a more simplistic way. Motivational speaking talks about how you need to do things to bolster your life. Art touches things that are more profound, deeper, more esoteric, and more elevated. Yeah, you may disagree with me. I don't give a shit. We can have a discussion about that for a long time. But the fact is that artists need to channel something deeper. And when you channel deeper, you will enable yourself to react to all around you with passion, with gusto. And when you have a list, an ever lengthening list of ideas that you need to get out, you will never be at a loss for generating content. I hope that helps. <clears throat> so here's the other thing. I mean, even in this, even in this, it says, you have to step right up and seize it because no one's going to do it for you, right? You're in this not to be deferential. One of my notes that I'm using for this. It's not even the most recent note. It's just one of the neat notes. You're not in this to be deferential. You're in this to bring it big. And nobody can get inside your head to understand what you need. And nobody actually wants to, except maybe your mom, your dad, or your spouse. And even those people are busy with their shit. So your invested sense of self is what you will use to step up and claim your rightful place. I know you may be shy. Your life is not the time to be shy. You can be as introverted as you want. I'm surprisingly introverted myself. You might, you will be surprised to know how actually introverted and shy I actually am underneath here. I have taught myself to not. Huh. I have taught myself to not let my introversion and my shyness get in my way. I taught myself that a long time ago. I needed to. I can always revert and recede into myself. And when I am not doing these things, I do that often. I love logging time just with me. But those are choices and that's an option I have. I am not going to I am not going to be bound. 
by my shyness, by my introversion. I don't like to. I don't like to prevent myself from being able to do things because fear is going to insist on trying to stop me. Part of my program is about mindset. It's called performance mindset. Everything you need to step forward, like Nikki, you are stepping up. And that brings me to your comment. This is very helpful in your program in terms of guiding how to acquire your own thoughts on topics. My pleasure, my fine friend. <clears throat> so as I was saying, my ability to step up into this, doing this, this is what I do. And when you do that, when you do that, you will enable yourself to say aloud what most people only dare to think. I'm going to look at this question again. Nikki, again, I think I struggle with producing the videos when I need more time to write out and prep behind the scenes. How much prep time does it take you to produce a video like this? when you were starting out versus now? Well, I'll tell you. I am more on top of doing the live things now than I was before. Live takes practice. <clears throat> However, sculpting short Work like what you have done in the program already, Nikki. You know, creating, forging video content that you have done in there. Quick, succinct, clear. That comes from going into the program, going into the content creation section, and starting to bring it, knowing your outline for your presentations. Facebook Live takes a little practice. Why am I better at this now? Because I have continually practiced what I am doing here in order to find the ways that I actually enjoy interacting. And it takes a while to get people responding to you. So that you can get two-way feedback, you know, two-way dialogue. And it also, most importantly, starts by doing it straight into that camera right there. You have to just use the process that I've laid out in the program in order to start developing your own unique way of purporting yourself here. When you do that, you will start to attract people. This right here, you know, this is now almost 25 minutes and I'll stop in one minute because I like to stop by 25 minutes and these Facebook lives continually go longer than they used to because there's interaction. But I want you to know that you start creating interesting, compelling work in my program, enabling you to know what it is you want to say and why you want to say it so that you can flesh out content that feels good to you. When you do that, you will attract people. And then your Facebook lives will go from being a one-way thing to a two-way thing. So here's 10 seconds left. When you're ready for this, 
which, by the way, is sooner than you think you're ready, because you're probably ready now, hit me up. I want to hear from you. I want, oh, this is nice. <laughs> Your program is epic and you do teach content, which is so valuable, ever grateful. My fine friend, I'm on your side. When you're ready to learn what Nikki knows in this program, I want to hear from you. I'll leave my details for my one-on-ones or a strategy session here. And you don't have to wait for that. You can find me here. Send me a message. Let me know you're ready. If you're actually ready, we will turn you from some amateur to some badass with a full-fledged plan. See you later.